Uh, yeah, you know, he's got uh, these all these uh, osteoarthritis and all these uh, pains in his hips and in his knees and everywhere. Basically, he's he's always in pain, so uh, he couldn't even walk today to uh, come to the clinic. Okay, uh, I see. Yes, I see. Um, uh, could you tell me when uh, when this accident happened? Yeah, uh, he actually, uh, yeah, he, he had a fall the other day, and then, uh, but he's he's always had this, um, and because you know he uh, takes these thinning tablets, he is always bruising, and his um, his right right knee is, and his right thigh is also very painful. Uh, uh, he's I... in real pain. Yeah, it was two days ago, I think. It was the, the day before yesterday. He had a... Yes. Yeah, I totally understand your concern, but uh, let me explain uh, this matter uh, in detail for you. Uh, your father, as you know, your father uh, consumes a, a special uh, drug uh, um, for, thinning, uh, for thinning blood. That's uh, right, the, the, the warfarin, yes. I, I yes, know the warfarin. The warfarin, or warfarin, yes. Uh, do you do you do you heard anything? Have you, have you heard anything uh, about uh, warfarin and uh, and its side effect? Oh yes, I know it because it, it gets a bruising all the time. I know it's uh, it's supposed to thin the blood to prevent from uh, clots. Uh, uh, yes, okay. but uh, what doctor? What I'm saying is uh, he's in pain. Um, I. I my problem is not the warfarin, you know, the, the warfarin is okay. Uh, my problem is uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the pain, uh, so I need a painkiller for him. Uh, yes, I appreciate your uh, your worriness, uh, but um, uh, as you know, uh, I should uh, visit and evaluate uh, pa the patient condition uh, before prescription a, a, a drug. Uh, on the other hand, as you know, as you know, warfarin has um, uh, has uh, serious side effects. So, uh, in your situation, uh, we need uh, we need uh, uh, evaluate carefully your father uh, um, because there is uh, uh, there is some possibility to uh, increase uh, internal uh, bleeding about your father. Is that mm. clear? Is that clear so far? Uh, well, it is clear, but what is not clear is that how you accept a patient to be in pain. And now we have to uh, wait for you to come and see him. But what happens then? Do you give him a painkiller? Not give him the painkiller now. Uh, I, I have a better uh, suggestion for you. Uh, please let me to uh, visit uh, your father at home. And after it, I uh, uh, I will prescribe uh, appropriate uh, drug and uh, ease your um, uh, and ease uh, the, your father's pain. Is but, it okay uh, with it? Uh, well, but but he is in pain now, and we have to wait. Uh, well, um, yeah, is it really necessary? Because uh, we can actually. Uh, we just gave him the, the Panadin 40 yesterday, and it worked very well. Um, so, and uh, I think that is a safe drug, isn't it? Uh, yes, Panadin 40 is safe, but uh, please, uh, please attention. Uh, Painkiller is a short um, is a short solution, and your uh, your father maybe uh, maybe uh, has um, side effects. Uh, maybe have maybe have um, a combination of uh, side effects of warfarin and uh, trauma. Uh, this combination can lead to a serious condition. So it is important to evaluate your father's condition before any prescription. Okay, uh, so uh, are you coming to see him today? Yes, sure. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. You're okay. welcome. <laughs> it's, uh, so um, the first thing is, uh, how was your feeling? Uh, how did you feel? 
uh, about uh, Okay. Hello, Mr. Shakuri. Uh, I am glad to see you. Uh, and um, you had uh, diabetes. Uh, you had checked your blood uh, tests, and uh, now the results is ready. Um, are you ready to talk about this? Uh, sorry. What is it? Uh, the sugar diabetes. You said I have sugar diabetes. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, okay. because your te blood glucose test result is high like before. Okay. Uh, uh, no, well, I don't eat any sugar. I, I never eat any sugar. Uh, why should I have sugar diabetes? Uh, okay. Uh, it's not necessary that you take, uh, you eat uh, sugar too much. You can get sugar di diabetes without eating too much uh, sugar. Is it okay? Do you so agree? Why do you call it sugar diabetes then? Uh, because uh, the level of uh, glucose that uh, is uh, the sugar that we called it in medicine uh, glucose will high in your uh, blood. Uh, we call it uh, sugar diabetes. And it will be happened uh, for because of several things. Not necessary to you to eat too much sugar. Uh, okay, but I well, I don't I don't eat any sugar. So I just have um, just a few drinks and just Coca Cola and um, I have um, honey and chocolate, but I never eat any sugar. I need never add sugar to my tea or coffee. Okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, but we just two examinations. You say that uh, I am uh, I have sugar diabetes. Uh, yes. It was, but it was just a test. Uh, how can you be sure? Uh, because we check it twice. And all uh, in two times, both uh, in both times, uh, the result was high. And based on WHO uh, standards, you have uh, sugar diabetes. Okay. Uh, now, so what should I do now if I don't eat sugar? Would that be okay? Uh, no, uh, it is necessary to be uh, monitored about other status like uh, your blood pressure and your cholesterol and all of them can help you to, pre to prevent and control your blood sugar uh, and also uh, you control the adverse effect of blood sugar in your blood vessel, in your heart, in your brain, and uh, other parts of your body, like uh, kidneys and your kidneys and your eyes. Uh, so this, you means, uh, this means more tests and then again, more blood tests. I have to come back and do more blood tests, but then uh, why should I do that? I just, if I have sugar diabetes, I don't eat sugar and that's, uh, that's enough, isn't it? I totally understand your concern and uh, it's true, but uh, other uh, things like your blood sugar and your cholesterol also affects your sugars in your blood and also affect uh, the uh, complicate increase the complication of blood sugar in your blood vessels and your other parts of your body. So it is necessary to be monitored uh, your others, uh, other um, things in your body. Uh, what do you mean by other things in my body? Uh, like your blood sugar, blood pressure, your blood uh, pressure and your cholesterol uh, and like and your uh, liver function 
and your kidney function and also your eyes uh, need to be checked like this. Okay, so this means more blood tests. Yes, it's necessary. And also it is necessary, I recommend you to uh, change your lifestyle. Uh, do you smoke? <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's fine, okay. <laughs> right, uh, so how, how did you feel? <laughs> I have too much stress. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh... So basically, uh, we are uh, gift wrapping this. We're saying that there are some good news, some bad news. Which one would you like to hear first? Okay. Um, if the patient says, okay, what's the good news? We say, oh, the good news is that uh, uh, this is nothing that uh, is going to kill you now. Okay. It's, there is no uh, imminent danger. It's, um and um, you have a condition which is treatable, which is manageable, okay? Um, so what's the bad news? The bad news is that, well, it is uh, curable. It's not curable. It is uh, controllable. We can control diabetes, but it is um, an illness, and you've got diabetes, um, so this is the bad news. Uh, so... Uh, whichever the patient says, uh, you can say that, okay, the bad news is that you have diabetes, but the good news exactly after that. You say, but the good news is that it can be controlled. Okay? So that's the, that's the rule about uh, breaking bad news. That's how we break bad news. Okay? And always breaking bad news are difficult. Uh, no, the patient is in denial. Uh, the patient is not being convinced. Uh, so we need to convince them. Um, right. Uh, so, um, so um, going back to this, um, uh, to this part, to the uh, feedback. Uh, you said that uh, your empathy was low, and that's why the patient wasn't very convinced. Uh, but uh, you're giving information, your information giving was good, but uh, not in the chunking and checking. You actually give a lecture and the report was missing. It means the connection phase and that's why uh, the patient was not very satisfied. And that's, uh, that's what we say, because you didn't actually have uh, um, an introduction. You didn't actually... Um, um, prepare the context. You just said you suddenly went to say you have diabetes. Okay. Um, so, um, in terms of what we can do is uh, at first, okay, Mrs. Smith, come and have a seat. Uh, well, uh, there is some good news, some bad news. Um, what? Which one would you like to hear first? Uh, okay. Um, um, unfortunately, you have diabetes uh, in the blood test that we did. Um, uh, but the good news is that uh, this is not very serious at the moment, and it is just the beginning of the illness. It can be controlled. Uh, it is not curable, but it can be controlled. How much do you know about diabetes? Okay. So the first thing, before you give information to a patient, you need to ask uh, how much they know. And uh, what would you like to know? And if you have, do you have any questions? Would you like to ask me any questions? And then the patient says, yeah, what is diabetes? And what should I do? If you give them the opportunity to ask you questions and uh, to digest the, uh, the news, uh, there will be, so you need a pause, basically. You need to pause and say, okay, uh, do you want to ask me any more questions? How much do you know about uh uh, diabetes and what would you like to know? Uh, so instead of lecturing the patient, uh, which uh, the patient keeps going backwards, uh, they keep uh, denying and say, no, no, I don't agree with you. We just have two blood tests. And then, uh, well, you rightly explained uh, diabetes is high blood sugar 
and it causes complications. And the complications can be, uh, well, uh, usually end organ damage, which uh, we don't say like that, but we say uh, uh, high sugar attacks different parts of the body. And basically that's uh, why we want the blood sugar to come down. And basically we need to make sure the blood pressure is well controlled because that makes the diabetes worse. Um, so we need to check the important organs regularly. We need to check your kidney, your brain, your heart, your liver. Okay. Uh, so, um, um, and going back here to this, uh, so relationship building is that same thing as report. Understanding and incorporating the patient's perspective. So the patient was saying that, uh, well, I don't eat sugar. Uh, but what you can say is, well, it's actually not the sugar. It's everything you eat. It changes the sugar. And uh, I understand that you don't eat sugar, but that's not what uh, you mentioned. That is nothing that, uh, uh, it's not just eating sugar. Providing a structure. Um, did you do signposting? No. No. Uh, what can we do to signpost? Uh, okay. About first about uh, talking about the uh, diabetes, and then about how we can control it. Right. Okay. And uh, at the end, how uh, we can. Um, control it and also other thing that need to be controlled along with uh, along by uh, along with uh, your sugar right okay so uh, at each stage you can pause and you can say okay now um, how much do you know about diabetes uh, shall we discuss what we can do uh, for diabetes um Okay, so, um, and then you ask uh, for permission and you ask that, uh, you ask for understanding. So that also gives a structure. Okay. Uh, information gathering, you didn't ask much uh, what the patient knows already. Uh, information giving, you did give a lot of information, but uh, that would be, that would have been much better with chunking and checking. So if you could do that, chunking and checking. Okay. Okay. Um, now, uh, guys, are you tired? No, no doctor, no, no doctor, but, uh, I'm but, but I'm depressed. Why? Because I found I'm very, very weak. Um, right. Okay. Uh, well. We can structure, uh, and you're not weak. Uh, you just need uh, more practice. You know, this is like driving. Uh, driving is something you you cannot read from the book. Okay, uh, even if you read a book about driving, you have to go and do that. Okay, and this yeah. is the same thing. I mean, the fact that um, uh, um, what we normally do, uh, we practice one month uh, with uh, um, with our trainees uh, for consultation. Okay, so that basically uh, for one month we have the same type of discussion every day, and then we ask them uh, to go and practice, uh, even for native speakers. So. It's uh, nothing, uh, so here you have to both uh, learn uh, the language and also the skills. And this is twice uh, as much effort. Um, but, uh, well, you can do it, why not? Um, a lot of people can do that. Um, it's just practice. Uh, right. Uh, okay. Uh, so, who has practiced? So, uh, uh, the first one, uh, the f uh, the first case was, uh, yes, yeah. yeah, and the second one was, yes, 
Okay. Okay. Right. So, uh, basically, next time uh, we want the others to contribute as well and to practice. Right. Now, uh, would you like me to uh, play the doctor for one of these cases and one of you becomes a patient? Yes, it's very good. Yep. Yes. Everybody, would you like that? It's fabulous. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, who it's wants to be the patient? Oh, yeah. Do you have a question to, to ask me? Doctor, if the if there um, any um, book or uh, any um, file that you recommend uh, us for uh, reading and practice uh, according uh, it, uh, reading and practice um. for a speaking, I mean. Oh, okay. Uh, if um, if you go to uh, to my website. Uh, to the, uh, if you go to the members area, uh, have you been that? Have you seen that? Yeah. Uh, the, okay. Uh, in the members area, there is a file. There is a. Um, let me see. Yeah. Uh, there is a file called communication skills. Okay. Uh, members area. Yes. So you go to the file section and there is uh, something, uh, there's a file called communication skills. Yes. Yeah. So that, that is, um, um, that is a good start. So if you have a look at that, uh, uh, this is, uh, yeah, consultation modes and communication skills. It's a PowerPoint. Uh, it's, you have, we can have a look at that. Uh, also, um, I will share with you. There, uh, there is a, uh, there is a book which is called uh, "Talking with Patients." 